Much appreciated, Coach. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the New Orleans Saints. They go with Leonard Fournette, third year back from LSU. Give him three there on the first play of the game and it's second down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Double dog, double dog. That's the way. On second down, Minshew. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Minshew throwing on third down. And he's going to go down again. Give the sack to David Onyemata, the product of Nigeria by way of Canada. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The football heading back over to the New Orleans Saints, who have had now consecutive 4-1 starts for the first time in franchise history. Mentioned it earlier, but they got to 4-1 with that victory 31-24 over Tampa Bay in Week 5. And Teddy Bridgewater, and we also talked about this earlier, he's been excellent. 3-0 as a starter coming in for the injured Drew Brees. And by the way, speaking of Brees, over the weekend, he posted a video of himself throwing a football. So maybe nearing a return, that would be a good thing for New Orleans. But in the meantime, Teddy Bridgewater on fire as his crew heads to Jacksonville in Week 6 and then to Chicago in Week 7. Here we go, G, get off the field. Again has it complete. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he gets this one down to the 24. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver. But you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second and a yard, Bridgewater gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Try to pound it in, Jumeirah. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. 
Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They run with a former Viking and Raider. It's Latavius Murray. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They'll run it with Kamara. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara taking it in. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Jacksonville's offense taking the field here again. And, you know, we were talking earlier about Gardner Minshew. Really has acquitted himself quite nicely in this offense has done well. Now, normally, Jacksonville known for their defense, but this season with Minshew and DJ Chark, who's been off to a great start, eight catches, 164 yards, two touchdowns in week five, but it was a loss to the Carolina Panthers because the defense really had no answer for Christian McCaffrey and company, and that dropped Jacksonville to two and three, and next up, home against the Saints, then they go to Cincinnati, and then back home for the Jets as they try to get their winning ways going. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Ready, ready. On second and 10, it's Minshew. Into the hands of his tight end, Jeff Swain. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 22 yards there, a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. To throw on second and 10, Minshew open his swing, the tight end. And he is down at the 48, a pickup of four that started at 148-yard line and ended at the other. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Now Minshew. He's got the hook up to Lee. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Completes it to Lee. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. 
We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. And Lambeau will put this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays. Yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 14 yards is the pickup, first down New Orleans. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Bridgewater on first down. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. The beauty of route running is it doesn't matter what position, everyone's doing the same thing. In this case, tight end, selling the vertical route. Get the defensive back on his heels, break off for the corner, and with good timing, you get a completion, as we just saw there. Bridgewater now. That one complete to Hill. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 17 there, and a New Orleans first down. First down, New Orleans. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Camara, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second down, Kamara. And down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They got to get to the 23 here on third. 
From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. And he's got his tight end, that's Smith. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The Saints spent a third-round pick on Traquan Smith out of UCF in 2018, and what a thrilling season for him. He was the guy that caught the pass from Drew Brees that moved him past Peyton Manning to become the all-time leading passer in NFL history. After 1-7-3, the score on EA Sports. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. On first and ten, Bridgewater. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Marcel Darius flies in at 331 pounds for the sack. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster. And now on second and goal, back even further. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Only two there on the dump off. It's third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Third and goal for Bridgewater. That's caught. It's Thomas. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Give him 13 yards on the connection, but not enough. Fourth down. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And Lutz puts this one through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So it's an old-school extra point that counts three times. It's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post-game, head coach looking at the box score, 19-yard field goal, grimacing a little bit, but having to realize that at that moment, getting three points was vital. Go ahead and get the points, put them on the board. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Just a lone field goal for him so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. And now it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. On second and ten. Minshew. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Pressure comes and down he goes. Marcus Davenport drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. 51 yards on the punt there. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. 11 yards there, first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. Off the play fake, Bridgewater. He's got Smith here. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three to throw Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. These guys had to set up for a field goal their last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't want to be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time. Three here, not the worst thing in the world. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Lutz is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run.
come back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones not having balls go through goalposts. Here's a run on first down that won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He will lose a yard, second and 11. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. We mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, Adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are, figure out the things that they really want to accomplish, and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? Find those guys and get in that direction. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. That's a game of it. Makes it third and three. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Strip that ball. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And good hustle here as this is going to be blown down right at the nine-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Give him three on the play, and that'll make it second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. A first down throw for Bridgewater. And this is Cook with a grab. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. On the ground, Kamara. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Kamara. The former All-Pro Marcel Darius brings him down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. 
I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now on second and 13, Bridgewater. And this is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. Third down here. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And that will be incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked Go to something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Minshew on first and 10. Throw left side to his tight end swing. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter. It's a good running back dive play. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. A shotgun give to Fournette. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Demario Davis, who was the Saints' leading tackler in his first year in New Orleans, in on the stop. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Out of the gun is Minshew. And this is going to be incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Logan Cook now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. First down, Bridgewater. Flush to his right. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. From the gun, Bridgewater. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away at its second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. A second down throw for Bridgewater. 
And Thomas has it. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much since. Throwing is Bridgewater. That'll be complete to Cook. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans. Number two. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To the air again with Bridgewater. And down he goes. The pressure getting to Bridgewater. The corner blitz works to perfection for A.J. Boye. And yeah, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be a tough third and 18. Bridgewater. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 26. It's a game of 20. First down, Saints. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Let's go. Let's do this. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Lutz's kick is good. And the lead stretches, 16-3 now. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball get three points knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half that's the old two for one special to finish things off Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'm going to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff 
spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. They run it again with Camaro. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Just wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive, but it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw it. Minshew. And he'll get that to Fournette. Complete. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And he'll lose yardage here back to the 15. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Here's Logan Cook now, standing just about on his own goal line. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. It's a pickup of five. Brings up second down. From just shy of midfield, Bridgewater. Thomas has got it. Complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again. That'll bring up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time 
He was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Throwing again. Bridgewater on second and ten. Looking again for Thomas. This time complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. They'll throw again. Bridgewater. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 18. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. They'll run. This is Kamara. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Two runs in a you row, but only two yards to show for him. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And just one man in the backfield here. That's Kamara, second and goal. Bridgewater to throw it. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn, but now it's third and goal. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game being on second half no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever. This was a big score to start the second half. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A pretty big opening there on first down. Eight yards up to the 33. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll run it again with Fournette. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just to pin their ears back and get after them now. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. What heck of a third down conversion. 33 yards. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well. They'll get a few stops. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. That one complete. He finds Sharp. The completion good for three and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That second down play nets a minus four. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in form. And able to find Conley. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 12-yard line. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Minshew, first and ten. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now, there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. Now Leonard Fournette. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything, change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. Open is Swain, the tight end. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. The kick by Lambeau is good. And that'll get the deficit back to 16. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. Able to give their defense a little bit of rest. Let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Josh Lambert. 
Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. How does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here? And Charles, you'd have to think this is where you want to start taking some time off the clock. Oh, definitely, because you got the lead, right? You take a good look up there and you say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, you're not in full-out protect mode. You want to make sure you run it, throw it safe, take some time off, and eat it up. Throwing Bridgewater. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out of the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Now a man open down the middle of the field. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And I don't think Kamara got there. Looks like they stopped him short. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Now Minshew on first and ten. Completes it to Lee. And he's going to get this from the 6 out to the 12. A pickup of 6 as they double their workspace. Decent start there to the drive. Big hill to climb, needing two touchdowns, also a 2-2-point two -two conversion. So, partner, how do you eat an elephant? I don't eat an elephant. Who eats elephant? But if you do, you do it one bite at a time. That's the way they've got to play this. One okay. play at a time. Yes, there's urgency, but they have to be careful as well. Let's go with like a 50-ounce ribbon. Yeah. One, one bite at a time. All right, I'm with you. Four yards the pick up. First down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Minshew sets to throw. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and ten. Here's Minshew. That's out to his running back, Fournette. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Minshew. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Sheldon Rankins gets him for a loss of eight. What great push up front. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense... He hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. I like the way I said that. In his defense. In his defense I got it. Yeah. You see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's second and eight. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Following the interception, here's Bridgewater. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Traquan Smith, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. On second down, Bridgewater again. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know what, a good one going finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard. Making it third and nine. Minshew throwing on third down. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Logan Cook now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails Let's out go, of bounds. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. A 
first down throw for Bridgewater. And this is Cook with a grab. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's where they're going to ride. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Bridgewater. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. A gain of three, second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Seven yards there and a first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Kamara try the right side. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. On the ground, this is Kamara. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field kicker. I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So with that, you figure, yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Minshew, he completes it to Westbrook. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Looking to throw it. Minshew. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop them a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Kamara, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and 12. Partner, I know my grade school teachers never would believe this, but I can absorb a lesson. I think there's a lesson in this one. He's having a great day running the football, but occasionally they're going to find a way to stop you, aren't they? Yeah, this time the defense stepped up and what's been so far a tough game for them. Here's Kamara off the draw. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. So a pretty big third down mistake right there. No doubt about it. And everyone's going to be upset. But they have to get out of this now and go ahead and play. They could have someone come at them in a big way on the next down. 
Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. Running with Camara. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. It's a gain of a yard. Brings up second and goal. At the four yard line. So this one a victory here for New Orleans. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage. Offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.